And to the sound of that means it is that time of day again where we don't think about work and just have fun playing. Mm, 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 mm. We are canned up right now. And by canned up, I mean we have a frosty can in front of us ready to be our companion, our faithful companion, as we journey for the next two hours through the world of 3D art. Mm. This, as you see right now, is what I finished with after the termination of Monday's event. Uh, we were working through building a series of elevated bridge. Saving! And it uh, turned out pretty good. These pieces... Uh, open, let's go with uh, non-grouped. These individual pieces are separate, and they can easily be joined by having male and female ends. Check it out. Very simple. I know there's some crazy technologies out there that uh, allows you to join these pieces together and lock them in and do all that crazy stuff, and that's great if you want to use that. That's fine. Uh, it's unnecessary. And this is all you really need to keep things from moving around. As long as you're not in an earthquake, uh, your terrain's not going to be bouncing around on the table, okay? Let's, let's be real here. When you're playing a game, most people are doing their best not to bump into the table. And when it happens, it sucks. And they apologize and move on. There is no need, really, to put them so tightly together that it takes forever to take them apart. This is an easy way. You just slide these two pieces. You see male and female ends on both sides. And you slide them in, slide them together, and they push up, and they're not going anywhere. And you just move it around. Uh, I've made several different sizes because you need different sizes. There's, uh, there's one that basically if... If you were to, uh, uh, one thing I haven't done is making lateral cuts to show what is exactly one inch. Um, but putting this on a battle map, you can see the extensions outward uh, of the battle map around it. And you'll see that, you know, about this piece is one inch. I want to say that there's probably, I think this is a two by three. Yeah, it looks like a 2 by 3 And I made the, the trench in the middle so that at least that distinguishes that there's two separate rows that this terrain piece can handle. So you can have multiple pieces on this upper piece uh, at one point. This is the bigger piece, of course. And this one has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 segments, pretty much. Uh, and again, they're measured perfectly so that not the little male piece, but this piece right here, butted up to another piece. This will be from here to this piece will be exactly, in, in this case, five inches. Okay, the width is going to be a little bit wider. Uh, why? Because uh, I noticed if we brought these pieces the supports inward so that the actual outer shell was, in fact, the true uh, two inches wide, then you would not have much room right here between the two. Uh, it would not have much room right here for a mini to fit because these things would be way inside here. Um, it just wouldn't work. This is pretty much the only way you can go. It's not going to matter. <clears throat> you can get away with going laterally as long as one side measures accurately uh, to the map. That way you can line it up. And like I said, you can you can sit there and, and use the middle. This particular piece I just showed without what it looks like without the line. But it, all the other pieces will have a, a segment in the line uh, in the middle. So like over here, you've got one in the middle. And you just line this line up with your battle map and you're good to go. And you know that the uh, ends are going to line up. 
So very simple to uh, to get it aligned properly. <clears throat> I don't like uh, the idea of the curves uh, on these walkways. They can be, and maybe I'll make them in the future, but they're a lot more challenging to make beams, these beams here, uh, cut so that they're at wedges uh, because it would curve. The inside piece would be narrower than the outside piece, and I just didn't want to do that. So it's good. This will be good and fine. Um, if you need a 90 degree or a turn, well, you just deal with it. Don't put a current turn in it. Maybe it's all straightaways. Uh, or they could make it old and say, okay, well, that's this piece is broken. And you notice that there is a segment uh, farther down right here. And then the continue on piece over here. And put that up against that and put this over to one side and now you got this gap here where the pieces come right here they're like ah crap I gotta go over there well that's fine you just make a skill check of some kind get over there and you move where you're one way you eliminate the need of having that curve and you give a little extra interesting element there I'm not having to I can delete those get them out of the way I've got them saved somewhere else this is my traditional uh, push the wrong button. This is my traditional uh, starting point and I just made it totally gone. Uh, it is 25.4 millimeters squared which if you've mentioned in the last episodes or if you're from another country other than America uh, and two other countries you would know that 25.4 millimeters is one inch. And I base everything off of that. Okay. So tonight we're going to try, this is going to be something that will definitely not be made in one night. It's going to probably take uh, at least uh, two sessions, and I'll probably be working quite a bit of this over the weekend um, on my own, because I, I tend to move a little bit faster when I'm not having to talk so much. Um, but for now, we're going to get us started. We, as you can see in the title of this particular th uh, stream, uh, Below the Feed, Episode 12, Creating a witch's house. That is what we're going after today. Now, we built a gnome house already, and that was just a tree trunk, a large one, that was hollowed out with a door. We're going to do the opposite tonight. We're going to build a semi-part of a house, the majority of a house, uh, with a tree that grows around it and around over it and beside it and maybe even through it. Uh, I want it all on top of a uh, kind of a stone uh, outcropping. So basically it's going to be elevated. The house is going to be elevated. And I want to have a little bridge. Yeah, another one of those freaking things. Uh, I want a little stone bridge that crosses a gap between the house that's sitting on the rock and then another segment of rock that has a little path that leads down to the ground of your battle map. And that way you can have something really cool to have. I'm all about elevations. We, we work too much on the battle map. We don't work high enough. We don't value the vertical part as much as we should. So we're going to really encourage that today. How big do we want to make this bad boy? Um, good question. Uh, let's make these lined up properly uh, that's two inches we're gonna make this a uh, fairly good size piece because it needs it's not gonna be something that will be uh, inhabitable in other words you can't remove the top I'm not gonna make it so you can remove the top and get into it that'll be just deal with it uh, it's really difficult to make things not just economically on the outside but also on the inside um, it really makes things tough doing it that way uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is pretty much the, if I'm not mistaken, uh, if that's eight by eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I believe in my printer on a, on a Prusa, uh, MK3, I think that is the max size that I can print eight by eight. Um, I think I can bring it, print it higher 
I want to say it's like nine inches tall. Uh, I don't think it can do ten. Uh, so we're going to try to keep it well within the eight. Uh, but this is going to be a main piece. This is going to be a place that uh, will have not necessarily the witch out, you know, inside the house, but it will be in the vicinity. So the characters will approach the house, and there will be a battle outside the house, and it will just be part of the ambience. Um, maybe at a later date I'll, I'll make it so that you can go inside, but for now it's, it's just too much for printing purposes. Uh, let's do this. So I'm going to make it, uh, let's see, how big was the, uh, I want to import the dwarf house because I want to see, uh, gnome tree, uh, render test. I think this is it. Uh, gnome tree, is that it? This seems like that's too big. Nope, that's the right size. All right, so this is the size of the gnome tree. Um, so, and here's the, it seems like it's way bigger than it really was. Let me remove that and add another one. Because I think that was the wrong one. I think this is, I think I scaled it up. Let's see, 2020. I don't know what the hell that means. That seems closer. Where am I at? There it is. Is it the same size as what it was? Show enough is. Big. I just don't remember printing it being that big. I'm looking at it right now. It doesn't look like it's 8 inches and wide, but it's a big little honking thing. So we may have to... Uh, this may be an issue, but we'll deal with it. All right. Well, let me double check real quick. Uh, uh, MK3 printing dimensions. I just want to double check. Sorry, you're going to hate me for this. Let's just deal with it. Uh, do, do, do. Overall dimensions. Here we go. Let's see, exterior, okay, so it's 16 by 16 is the outside, and then the inside is, yeah, it is 8 and some change. Okay, so we'll deal with that. All right, the first thing is we're going to try to build the house first, and then we'll build the rock formation underneath it based upon how the house is. Uh, the nice thing is we don't have to build all of that building, so we're going to start with uh, kind of a, like a gable. Uh, and right now I want to build it with a cone, and this is going to be kind of off to one side. I don't want it very big because it's not going to be that important. It's just going to be a feature that looks good, and it's going to have a rock base, and then it turns into stone or to to wood afterwards. So this will be kind of a, a foundation, which is always nice to have a wider base in the top so it can. Especially when it comes to towers. Uh, let's see. Let's make these actually even numbers so that it makes more sense. Yeah, there we go. All right. And I have a feeling that we may have to be doing this a second time, but we're going to try it anyway just to do it off the fly. Let's see. Minus three. Push a plus there to get the extra one zeroed out. We've done this before. Um, already, I'm kind of worried that I did not do enough segments. Let's back up a little bit, just in case. Uh, let's make 60, because... Um, do I need to put any segments on the side? Yeah, I do. Um, 20 sounds good. Because these are going to be rocks. It's going to be stone, just like we've done like with the bridge and things like that. It'll be bumpy and stick it out and all that. Doesn't need any caps, so leave that bare. Then put the edit poly back on it. Hit your uh, top poly gone. And go back to your bevel settings. And then bring it back in. Let's see, we did three last time. Let's do three this time. Push your plus. Zero it out. 
and the extrude. See how that's going to be a lot smoother than it was. It's still faceted. Matter of fact, speaking of faceted, one thing I have not been able to uh, remember to do lately, I need to do that. First thing you need to do besides your uh, make sure that your measurements are set to millimeters is to change the default shading to faceted. Why? Because that's how the printer is going to be printing. It does not automatically smooth that base like it did. So if you think that that's not going to be smooth enough for you, then you go in there and add more segments. Quite honestly, it looks a little bit rougher than it really is. So I think we're fine. All right. So we want to bring this up. Uh, let's make us a safety net here. Uh, let's do it. Uh, I can't remember what 8 by 8 is, so let's just make it on top of this thing real quick 8 by 8 and then 200 millimeters that th I think that did not make 200 millimeter I typed in 200 and then it decided to put in 200,000 uh, which is definitely not what we wanted thank you computer alright so theoretically that could be our peak. I'm going to make it less than that. I want to make it 150. That will be... Boy, this is going to be tight to bring that up. Yeah, we can do this. We can do this. But that's going to be basically our dimensions. We're going to try to keep it within that box. Um, so here we go. So this one, we're going to go up because I really want a high uh, peak on the whole thing. Um... That window, I'm going to put a window right up here, so that should be okay. And so let's continue on with our bevel. I want it to come out. Oops. Come on now. What the crap? There we go. It was still, the command had not been cleared off, so it was still running with that dimension asking, do you want it to be that high? And you never said yes by clicking this checkbox. I did, and now I'm ready to go for the next input. I want to come out a little bit. Let's do the same dimension. So it's three millimeters here, three millimeters there. It keeps it nice and even. Uh, but this time, without pushing the plus, I'm going to come up a little bit. Let's say five. That, that looks like a reasonable one. Uh, because I want this particular type of architecture to have kind of a flared uh, rooftop to it. So let's do that again. But now we're going to go in and make it something like 60. I like that because it's going to be, again, I want to make it, I want this house and all the other pieces to kind of feel magical Not, and, and the fairy tale type of magical. We've seen so many of the fantasy, you know, role playing games that are hardcore, you know, Lord of the Ring type of thing or D and D or whatnot. I still want that to be used, but we just don't have enough of the like classic fantasy. We're going to collapse that down so that, we have a little bit of a peak, so we got a kind of a gable there. Um, and now I want to do a couple things with this thing. I want to taper it inward because I want it to sag to give it some age, and then I want this peak to have a little bit flared out peak at the top uh, for ventilation, I guess, uh, just for looks. So we're going to add some segments here. I want to add a couple of them here, and that'll be good. And yeah, that'll be enough. And now I do not want this top one. I want to just have. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, I just I don't want that top one. I'm going to sag these. So in order to do that, uh, what we're going to do is come in and go to top view, and we're going to do this in succession where we're going to scale them in a little bit at a time 
like we're seeing there. But then we're going to remove and keep going. Just the bottom one. Do it from the side, I guess. We want, I wanted more than that. It just doesn't have the character that I wanted in. I want that to have a nice break in. It's old. It's decrepit. It's been here forever. They're going to discover it. It's the old tale of it being long forgotten. No one wants to go out here to see her. Because she's living by herself. She turns out she's actually a smoking hot chick. And everybody's like, no, she's old. She's decrepit. You don't want to, she's, she's wicked. You don't want to talk to her. And she's actually quite a nice lady. Uh, and will make you like macaroons if you like macaroons. If you don't like coconut, she'll just make you, you know, chocolate chip cookies. Uh, we're going a little bit too extreme here on this house. But... We're okay. We're going to have to smooth that out because I don't like the facets there, but it's getting, it's getting where I want it to be. I don't know if I want it quite that intense. Let's go to vertices and bring this thing down just a tad bit so it flares out a little bit more. Bring this down so it flares out more bring it down that may be the reason that may be what I was getting at but the problem is I really want this to to have a nice high peak to it not oops don't want the top one it's already flared out and now I want the whole thing maybe I want the whole thing to stretch out and then bring it up a little bit, back to where I was. Get this thing flared out more. Maybe we don't need the three millimeters. That may be the reason. Yeah, that's starting to look it. All right. I want to take this top piece. I want to make sure I get this. I want to make this top piece flare out. So we're going to do bevel again. Clear out everything. Uh, first thing we want to do is change from group normals to local normals. Uh, hey. What's going down? One second there. I don't understand. Bevel. Local. It's not. Well, what about poly? Eh, it's definitely not what I want there. Oh. It may be because we need to extrude it. <laughs> not bevel it. There we go. You just got to learn the system. Just got to learn the system. All right. So now it's got this little peak at the top. Um, you know, I really want this to not be surrounded. That's. I think that's where it's coming from. It's not. It's not necessarily the. Round it, it's the roundness that's bug, bugging me. Uh, I want it to be, uh, you know, like 10 segments across. And so, so we're going to can we? I think we can. Ah, is this which one is the edges? Nope, what's this for to see up here dang it it's right there I was hoping it would be like by itself so it's easy to select but um, we'll just do it this way from front view grab um, how many vertices do we have here 60 that's right we set it to 60 dang it all right um, so I want let's go with six sides so we're gonna break this down so it looks like it's more like six segments uh, six sides that make up this roof so it's not completely smooth and cylindrical so we want to get 10 at 16 uh, because we're grabbing it from the other side 10 it's got it for both sides yeah 
and unfortunately we can't do it from that side. So what we're going to do is grab just these five right here, right? No, we want we want ten. We want ten of them because six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It doesn't matter where. It just needs to be ten consecutive right there. And we're going to flatten these down and see what happens. Nope, not that way. Yeah, something like that. Hope this is right. I haven't saved or anything. <laughs> Fly by the seat of your pants. Five, six, seven, eight. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I'm going to rotate this bad boy. Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Oops. I accidentally selected something else. Uh, let's grab this way. It's seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we're going to try and see whatever. There we go. It's fine. Even though it's disoriented like that, we just rotate the thing in the top view. And then get it. To where this piece and this piece look close in proximity to the ed the outer edge, which is this is the base of the actual tower. So just get it to that general proximity, and it should be okay. Um, let's continue on. So we need ten of these again. That's ten, and then we're going to flatten it, and then we're going to pull it back so that. It needs to be turned just a t just a hair. There we go, and then bring it out like that. Hear me out, guys. Don't leave. Don't don't lose me here. No, don't leave me alone. Don't leave me around. I got this. Trust me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, it's ten right there. All right. And just pick one. Not quite that drastic. Yeah, that's close enough. It's one of the two. Because you're going to rotate it anyway. See, like that. And then, theoretically, this is ten. If I did my math right. Did I do my math right? I did! It is exactly ten. And then we hit the line tool. I'm hitting these X, Y, Z over here. We've done that before. This piece here seems to be a little out of the way, so we're going to select this and we're going to rotate it just a tad bit. Thank you for your Steam purchase. Well, I just told everybody who I was. And that's awesome. And it did do do. And then we just have to, I guess we have to turn off, uh, we have to turn off the snap tool, so we have to just, I guess like that, because I just want to get it close enough. There. All right, now that looks a little bit less modern, and we'll still get to work on this one. Because we need to make the uh, extensions and all that. This is looking good so far. Let's save this real quick before we think about anything else. Gnome tree. And then back up. We need to add which house. Which house. Ah. All right. Now, uh, I want to work on the bottom part. I like to jump around and keep things different. I don't like to stick on one thing too long and you get stagnant on it. All right, I want the I want a window that goes for simplicity's sake from top to bottom. 
I want a wood beam that goes along the bottom here where my cursor is, and then I want the rest of it to have random vertical wood pieces, preferably in the same contention as the one up above where these are, because it's going to all fit in the same nice uh, area. So in this regard, it's going to be uh, this segment and then a window. Let me see here. I need a segment down here for the wood. I need the bottom part of the window. I need the window cut out. That's what I've had. You have to visualize this while you're adding the segments because you're seeing what do you need the, the hole for. So this will be the area where the, the bottom of the window will be once you adjust the size. This will be the actual hole in the window. You need one for the top. This will be the top beam. And that's it. And then this will be, I guess we'll leave a little bit of gap up there um, for miscellaneous purposes. So yeah, we'll keep that right there. All right, so let's adjust these to where we want them. I want the bottom piece to be down here to be big, but not too big. Uh, the actual uh, beam, actually I made a mistake. Because I want a gap between, well, do I really? Because that beam, the wood beam is going to be there, and then the bottom of the window will be there. Um, let me see here. Whoop. Uh, do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Looking, looking. I can't see. All right, I'm looking at reference materials so I can make sure that I know what I'm doing. Um, I really want, and I want a gap between the bottom piece and the bottom part of the wood frame. So we'll do this, and we'll add one, not four pieces and it'll be about that height so now we've got the bottom piece here that's going to go all the way around then this frame here and then the frame at the top and then one of these segments will be the sides the vertical sides and then we'll just extrude one of these areas here for the wood uh, that that braces the thing um, okay so we go to the side view select the bottom one select that select that and actually I gotta figure out where I want my window to be and how wide so right now that will be my width and height of the window yeah yeah. Yeah. See? Yeah. Um, boop, 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 boop. Why do I have it on edge? That's the wrong one. Dang it. Is it all that for nothing? All for nothing. It doesn't seem like it's lined up perfectly, and it is not. Because you got two right here before that, and you got, oh, no, it is. Two right there. Two of these before that. Two of these before that. It is centered. All right. Well, then grab this part, and now you got your little window. So now we can extrude it, and it'll all stay the same because I want all the wood beams to be the same piece in this regard. Let's just do bevel, clear all that nastiness out, and it's already set to local normals. So bring it out. 1.5 seems good enough. Because that'll be halfway to the end of here, because this is three. So that'll cut it in half. Um, we'll chamfer this wood here in a bit, so that don't have that sharp edge. Uh, but I think I want the window to be tapered just a tad bit. So we're going to bring it in. I just I just bent it out and then I bring it out like that. So I just 
use the bevel only part, not the extrude part, and then I physically pulled it out from from the window so that now I've got I've got the little piece that kind of juts out, which is adorable. All right. Um I want shutters on this one. So what I need to do right here is I need to split uh, this segment right here in the middle because it's going to be where the shutter is. So I want it to cut from here to there, and it sure as crap did not do what I wanted. So we're going to backtrack that cut and try it again. that worked and now we're going to go in here and we'll select all of these now Ooh, what happened there see it did not work dang it see how it's not connected like it should that's a bunch of crap it's a bunch of crap let's try again third time to charm boys and girls did not do it that time it does not like to cut that direction No one likes to cut upwards for some reason. Click on cut. Go up there and cut. Oh, I didn't want to do that either. I would cut there instead. What a... Geez. Cut a bottom part. I don't want that part. Did it again. It did it again. Alright, is there a way just to slice this bad boy? You can slice plain, you can split. Uh, I think you can slice plain. But it slices the whole thing. I don't want to do that. Uh, we could try cutting, uh, just doing connect. Is there a reason? Is there like two edges here? No, it's not. It's just one edge. Alright, so we've got these two pieces here, so we're going to go ahead and do connect, center it out so it's actually eh, down the middle now. Look how easy that was. Now, I want to select all these. Uh, eh, let's, just select, let's just select the half for now. Uh, we're going to bevel, and we're going to extrude then bevel like that bring it out make sure that it's actually got some meat to it and then select the other side just click the bevel settings and it'll automatically mirror what you just put in so now you've got kind of a shutter look to it this is a horrendous color and it does it almost all the time where you can't see squat that's a little bit better, but not great. Um, but yeah, you can see that there's now a split there. So it actually looks like some shutters, uh, some closed shutters. And typically the shutters are on the outside. I understand that. Um, too bad. That's just how it's going to go. So that's how this drawing is going to be. I draw how I want. All right. So now that we got that piece down, um, we're going to extrude all these pieces. Um, and I guess we should have done that to begin with. I didn't thought, but we're not going to extrude these out near as much as the bottom piece. So we might move those a little bit. I like the fact that some of these are two wide and one wide. It looks like a lot of them are one wide. Did we? We sure did. Check out what we did in the back. Naughty, naughty. This is why I was saying earlier, it's always important to make sure you're not grabbing the backside without you realizing it. See what happens? This is part of understanding and having a better awareness. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, I extruded and beveled. From this side, I had the backside selected. And it doesn't tell you that you did that. You have to be observant, so it's always important to go around the, the horn. Um, unfortunately, we're too far ahead in this regard. I can't back up enough time, so we're just going to have to deal with it. Um, 
we'll work on that here in a second. It looks like the only one that had two was that too wide was was this piece here which is real oh it it didn't either I just was fooled by the way he was saying that's all one piece okay it's just one segment um bu -bu 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 -bu. do I want it to do that or do I want it to come out I think I want it to come oops not that way not that way not that way third time's a charm nope Yeah, it's not going to do it that way. You're going to have to extrude this thing. Oh, bummer. All right, go to local normals on the bevel and then just bring it out. Uh, don't go very far because you've already got... You don't uh, have much room to work with because you're on this lip, and I don't want to go all the way in there. Problem is, because we extruded it and not uh, brought it out with the, the bottom piece... Um, Man, that sucks because I really, really wanted to back up now. Uh, all right, this is how we're gonna do this because I want to. I don't like the way this is being built right here. Let's make sure that we've got. I want everything, but the. I want all this taken out. Yeah, and then what the crap is this stuff down here? Uh... Oh yeah, I want all that going. I I want just the uh... dang it. I want the inner ring gone. That's what was caused by that that bevel that we were doing earlier. This is going to be a mess. Just because of the way it selects things. You can change that. We've done this before where we change it to a, a not a square. And you can actually deselect by just going around this, the ring here. Because we just want the bright ones deselected. I can do the rest later here in a second. There's half of it. And then do this last one. I think that's the, the one I want to delete. And then and, and delete it. Yeah. And now, if I'm not mistaken, um, this and this one should be right on top of each other. And they are. They're perfectly on top. Okay. So now what we can do is go back to the beginning go to your border we can clean this up by bridging this together like that and that cleaned up that mess that I had we can start back over again oh god we're starting back over again no we're not we just made a, a mistake and we decided to clean it up because of this and because of all that work I'm going to add another edit poly like I showed it to begin with and because this is a major piece here, and I'm going to go back, we're going to redo this again. I do not, I want to go back to having this rectangle selection tool. And we're going back to connect, and I want to say it was four, let's see, one, nope, five. Yeah, it was five. And we're going to move, to begin with, first one down to yonder. Deselect that. Move that down a little bit, and this will be where the bottom piece is. And then we'll move this up here to the top. And move this up here. And we're just eyeballing stuff. We don't care. That's good enough. Because it's all, like, you know, man-made, so it's not going to be perfect. All right, so this time what we're going to do is we're going to extrude this piece, but we're going to extrude the vertical pieces with it and the window. So we're going to take all of this, once again we're in the wrong stage, polygon selection tool, all of this, and we're going to go around the mulberry bush 
and select these four here, the vertical piece, and see we accidentally, oh, we did, we put it on the right side. We don't have it on the other side. We just have it on that right. And now I'm going to go in here and select just these pieces. We're going to all extrude them all at the same time so that they're all look like they're coming from the same timber, the same types of boards. There's going to be consistency in here uh, a little bit. So we want to keep it all the same size for now. Like that. Make sure that we haven't selected anything else on accident. Take a good gander. And I want to extrude the top part. And I only want to go all the way, I guess. Because we're not going to bevel. Uh, they're so small, There's it, this is so narrow a polygon, if we bevel these two closer together, they're going to start overlapping. This line will go too far to the left, this will go too far to the right, and they'll start overlapping. Um, so we're not going to bevel all of these at all. So we're just going to extrude these things. So we'll be okay with having it like this. This is going to be great. Just make sure you select the right ones. Oops. Two scoops of raisins will solve that. Uh, I deselected that on accident. Okay. And then that one and that one. That one and that one. higher. There we go. There. I think that's it. And it's all even now. Everything's selected. And we're going to extrude all this thing out. And we don't need bevel because we're not we're not squeezing these together. We're just extending them and we need to make sure absolutely it says local normals. So we're all going out in this direction. And we go out one millimeter. Okay. And matter of fact, we even go more than that. We can go 1.2. Oops, not 12. 1.2. So now we've got a pretty high nights extension here. We go click on OK. Alright. And now we'll go back to Ford and we're going to deselect everything except the base piece because the base piece I want it to actually go farther out because it's going to be more of a staple on the bottom oops I do not want bevel I just need extrude it's going to remember the 1.2 and I just want it 1.0 so that'll be meaning that this segment here is 1.2 and this is one millimeter so that's 2.2 millimeters in in size there which is just fine it, it has a little bit of a lip there still from the stone below it. You can see that. Then it still has plenty of the support on top. It's looking good. I'm liking it. All right. Let's get back to this. We're just going to make the little connection like we did last time. We just want one. And then bevel this time. Uh, do the same thing over there, bevel. And then I do want to do the same like we did earlier. We want to bevel these out. And again, local normal. I don't know why it always has to set to group. I hardly ever use group normals. It's usually this way. All right. Bevel that in a little bit, and we're good. 
There we go. And then, yeah, we'll just save over. It's fine. So now we've got a little bit of an area here. And the only thing that I don't like is the little top part here. This needs to, these pieces need to taper in. So we're just going to target weld these things back to where they belong. Because I want it not to take away from the mushroom top that's flared out. I wanted to extenuate that that's some kind of an eye-catching piece of the building. And with these things sticking out, it's kind of a distraction. So, oops, did I do that right? Yes, I did. Okay. La, 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 la. There we go. Nice. And if we want, we can we can uh, bring them in a little more if we wanted to. But I don't know if it's really all well. It might not be so bad. Sometimes mistakes are good. All right. All right. We got our gable little gable thing there. Let's do the uh, stones real quick, and then we'll move on to uh, the actual house proper. We're rolling. We're rolling. We're rolling. Add another edit poly because goodness knows we don't want to be editing the base along with the same stuff we just did. All right, for the, for the base, I want big, meaty blocks. I don't want cultured stone. I don't want it to be... Uh, excuse me. I don't want it to be too man-made because it's going to be blended in with the rock formation underneath. So, I need to be less formal at the bottom, more like rock at the bottom, and less like rock at the top. So what we'll do is we will go in here and start... Make sure we got it selected. And I will just start selecting these big, big blocks. And yes, you can drag click, but you just selected the backside. And yeah, you can check, uh, ignore back facing over here, but sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't. Just be prepared. All right. Um, I'm going to only extrude some blocks. I'm not going to extrude all. If you remember some of the Disney uh, cartoons, they sometimes don't draw all the blocks. They just draw a couple of them, and we just kind of accept it as an overall scheming thing. So we're going to do the same thing here. Deselect all that. And we're going to make them different sizes. Like that. And I'm only going to go down to about right here because we're going to start really tapering that off quickly uh, to something else. To the rock. Because we want it more natural, like we said. Shoot, yeah, you can make it vertical. That works. You can make it long, too. I don't want a small block. I want a, yeah, at least decent-sized block. All right. Yeah, I always check the base, too. We can de delete the base later, though. All right, so there's that. Uh, let's go ahead and bevel these bad boys outward. Turn it to normal. Uh, bring them out quite a bit uh, because we're going to turbo smooth, I believe, this. And then bring them in. You know what? We're going to try something different here. I'm going to back this up just a tad bit. And 
we're going to bevel it out but we're going to prepare that we need to do turbo smooth and, and we're going to bring it out say 2.5 and then we're going to hit the plus button and then zero it out and then bring it in just a tad bit like 5.5 rather and it automatically puts that segment right there and theoretically and see what turbo smooth looks like see how it does that I mean it's not entirely smooth but yeah that looks a lot more like blocks and things like that it's stuck out really far though so we may have to bring that in a little bit more but yeah that's that's one way you can pre prepare for the turbo smooth and yeah, look at the top part it doesn't quite look it looks like a Moscow type of like Basil Cathedral uh, I'm not really fond about that being so far out, but again, it's a witch's thing. It can be different. Um, so let's see what we can do with this. Uh, let's see if we can bring that in. One more time. Let's just do it one more time. It's not going to hurt anybody. Seventy-five. And then 40. There. See what Turbo Smooth looks like now. Doot doot. Yeah, that's better. That's better. That's better. Bears beat. Battlestar Galactica. All right. Now we want the bottom part to be rough uh like stone and in order to do that uh we want to go in and select the bottom uh first of all we want to get rid of the base part because i don't think we really uh man that may be a regret but i deleted it um the reason being is we're going to make this all chunky. All right. So we've got a lot of these. Um, actually, do I want to put it on now? Yeah, I want to put it on now because we can worry about that later uh, with the Turbo Smooth. Let's add some noise to it and see what happens. Uh, I may have to use a um, Poly Select. We'll see. Uh, I want 50. I want these big pieces. I want big stonework. Uh, 20, 20, 20. I want fractal turned on. Uh, that is substantial. I do not. Maybe I don't want zero. Ah, I don't want Z. Maybe I just want X and X and Y. And then it's a matter of getting the right kind of noise on it. I'm going to remove some of these, get it to the base, and then put it on. There. And I want to zero this out a little bit. Five at five, that seems awful. It's better, it's getting there. Yeah, you can move the gizmo too, so it actually has uh, a centerized piece. You can see how it moves like that. And you can actually increase the gizmo, and it stretches. See how it pulls it in and takes it out like that. If you want it to be uh, a wider base, you can try a little bit of that. It won't go too far, but it'll go somewhat out there. Um, that starts us off, and then add another poly. Yeah, it's probably good not to use Turbo Smooth. 
bring these out. Bring this out. Just keeping it so that it has still some solidity to it. I want all of this. I in all of this. Right here to come out. And, oh man, yeah. I want these pieces to come out. I don't want to be. I don't want any o uh, overhang from the rocks. And it's these pieces right here that are causing the effort. Yep, that's right there. Come out. Come out, run out wherever you are. Yeah, something like that. At least it's not un totally underhanging too much. Eh, something like this, we need to bring that out. Something's wrong here. So we fix it. Something like that. I'm wanting to keep some of these pieces inside because I think well that just didn't help uh, inside this line here so that the printing area has this mark right here do 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 do, 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 do. Yeah. Bring out this one. Ooh. That's a lot right there. Can we move it over? We sure can. Uh, do, 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 there. And then we'll make rock formation fit whatever this crazy piece ends up being. It's down here. Some of these are way too strong. I put turbo smooth on these bad boys in a bit. See how it looks. Doesn't look chunky enough. So, option two. We're going to remove this and that. And we're going to just manually make them. So we're going to put, hopefully this works. I don't know, I'm just envisioning it. So I don't want those. And what I do want is all of these pieces here not that but this this one and this one okay and we're gonna bring it out and bring it up yeah we're gonna probably be messing up the uh, boundary box that we we're hoping to not screw up but it'll be okay Bring it up. I'm holding down shift, by the way.
to get these extra segments. All right, let's smooth these out. Can't do it with the edge. Bring it up, bring it out. Bring it up, bring it out. Out, up, up, out, out. Onward, outward, through the loop. What are you doing, John? This is just a terrible thing. I don't understand what you're doing. Why did it go down there? You're making a mess. These are the things I expect to hear from everyone. It'll work in the end. It'll all work out. Just believe in yourself and believe that you can make a rock look like a rock. Because who's to say a rock doesn't look like a rock? Because it is a rock. It's just a rock. Mm -mm -mm, turn around for strengths. Uh, bring this bad boy in. Need to finish this off here. We don't have this extruded. And then snap right there. And then we want the vertices, these all to be at zero. Zero, zero, zero. Perfect. And needs to be welded. That's fine, that's fine. Bring these out. Just a tad bit. Just a dot, not a lot. Bring this in. We're getting there, but this is going to take a long time. We're not going to go through all this. I'm not going to bore you with building rocks all night long, because that's just going to be awful. But that's basically what we're going to go as. Uh, we are going to, or I'm going to go ahead and at some point uh, finish that up. And um, go all the way around. And that way I'll have my base and then I can build more rocks more outcropping okay all right so eventually I'm going to go ahead and finish that rock out and I'm going to continue on the rock so that it kind of goes up and down a little bit as it goes in there and then have this kind of have a few pieces jut out, uh, not so far than the other one, and we'll worry about that later. And it's basically going to taper into there. But let's just worry about that another time. I'm just going to make a new one. Let's work on the house itself, because, God, that took way too long. All right, now for the little house, um, we are going to draw the front facade only. Uh, because there's going to be trees and stuff in between. Um, so we're going to just maze, basically make ourselves 
Uh, let's keep it to the snap to the slim gem. And I want the thickness to be three. I'll put it right there. Yep. Don't like it there. Put it right there. That'll be the front of the house. A tree will go around this thing and uh, go up and over and through. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Uh, do, do, do. Next, I want to make sure that this thing has enough segments for a door. That's the door. Two more for the window. Two more for the frame of the door window. And then just a couple more just because. All right. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to move the, the window is going to be over to one side. So we'll put this one over to here. This is the vertical beam that goes over there. And this is the other vertical beam. It's a little bit bigger, but that's all right. And it goes over here. We'll make it a narrow one. And then, uh, actually, these are the doors. And they're going to have their own one frame. And you think about that. So, yeah, we'll need more, more segments. All right. Um, and I want this to be... Um, I'm not going to make a covered one, but I do want to make it have like a little awning over the front door. And let's see. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. Make the window. We'll do the same thing for the house as we will for the. Uh, tower, uh, making the bottom half stone, like that. Top half will be the wood or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I do want to have another one at the top, about right there. And that's going to be where the uh, supports for the eave are going to be. So we need another one for the window, the top part of the window. This will be about right there. And one more for the top of the beam. And one more for the bottom. See, we're just making all kinds of segments now. Ew. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okie dokie. I like it. Is the door too wide? Well... Let's find out. Cylinder. 12.5. 25. The size of a miniature. Looks like it would be not quite fit, which is fine. It's a littler person. So that's good enough. That will be good. And I will have it so that it's a two-door uh, split down the side to the um, horizontal. So the top half will open up, and the bottom half can open up. Um, which should be lovely. Mm -hmm. Bottom part here is going to be all stonework. So I actually need to add a whole bunch more segments here so I can make the stone work. That's good. And take some of this bottom piece out. All 
and I'm going to go, I just want the front facade selected. Because we're going to do the same thing as we did. I don't think we need the base part yet. We can re-add this later. And on second thought, I'll leave it in there just in case. Uh, and then now we're just basically going here and take your border. Hopefully we can select it all. Yeah. And we just need to extrude it. Uh, just a little ways. And then leave out. Oops. Go to border. Leave out the bottom part with edge selected. Alt select all this stuff so it doesn't get t uh, moved. And then... Uh, We'll bring it out a couple of times. That's as far as we need to go to. We'll connect this thing by going back to border. Oh, yeah, I didn't bring out the base. Dang it. Let me do that again. Let me back out. I was right. All right. I want to bring the base out. Bring it out again. There. Let me cap that. That's what I wanted. And now we just do the same thing as we did with the other ones. We bring... And this is a lot easier to, to bring out because it's on... We've got the X and Z axis perfectly so that we can... See how we're just perfectly moving along that segment. We don't want to go in and out just yet. We just want to get some difference in this. Maybe not quite that much. Um, but just get a little bit of unevenness. Goes up that wall like a crawler of some kind. Vine crawling. Bring that up right up to the bottom of that window. Mm-hmm. So far, working. It's working. It's working! Oops, not yet. I'm going to stick with the uh, X and Y. X and Y. Yeah, there we go. Now we can come down with it. We could actually uncap this for a second because we're going to have to cap it back with all this deformity uh, of moving things up and down because it won't like, like the end cap doesn't like uh, all this silliness. Let's see, bring this out a little bit. I am just randomly moving these around because this to me is just blocks. It's it's immaterial, but it just needs to be random kind of looking. Uh, maybe these blocks need to come out further. Maybe one doesn't come out quite as far or goes out even farther. That's fine. And you can make them rougher as you want, but mainly just wants to look like stone or something like that. And you can bring them up a little bit. All right more stuff to do later on on that area um, <laughs> probably not a good idea but we're gonna do it anyway alright so this one we want it to be all the way across because this is gonna be the separation between the wood and stone we don't need the back side uh, I think we might need the front side depending on where the tree is um, I would say, yeah, the sides here, too. And then bevel them out. Make sure that it's local. Make sure you come out. I don't know, 1.5.
and you can bell them if you want. Don't go very far. That's good enough. Alright. So now that we got that taken care of, now we can deal with the, uh, the actual door. Um, which we can, act, we can use uh, that rock, this little space here to kind of help with that. All right. Um, what that base part. And I'm just going to delete that because I want to get the border. Um, I want to seal this up right here. This little piece here because this is going to be an end of the window seal or seam that separates the two materials and there's going to be an end to it so we'll just tape that off so that now when we go to border it should theoretically when we select it yeah it selects just inside that and now we want to go inward and then we want to come inward just a tad bit and then I want the top to come down get to edge and you can just select the one and then bring it down a little bit more than what the other one would be just to give it a little bit different depth and dimension something like that pretty simple Okay. Uh, now I want to uh, cap this off, which I did. It didn't look like I did, but it did. Um, see how it is. And now I want to make a connection so that I have these two pieces together it's separate. And I want to bring it down to there. So that's now two halves. That's what I wanted. And I think I need to vert well some vertices right here. Yeah. Because we brought two vertices together. We need to weld those things. Because we brought it was up here. We brought it down there. So we need to weld those things. Uh, I'm going to take these two pieces here and I'm going to bevel them again. But this time, I'm going to actually change it from local to polygon. And that way, it's split. it should split these things, theoretically, when you use the bevel down here. You use the extrude and the bevel with polygons, and it'll split it. That way, you have your split door. And sometimes this thing's higher than the other. Sometimes it's the same height. It's fine. It's a good location where it's at. All right, now for the window. Uh, I want to bring this out, which I didn't bring out with the other ones. So I'm going to remember to bring out all these pieces. Oh man, I really want to have another piece over here too. So I guess we'll just make them. Make one there. That's good. And then go back to selecting. I just want these pieces up here because they're going to be the underhang supports of the roof that will be split level. And we're going to have to deal with this area, but it'll be okay. So we extrude these things out a little bit. Let's make it an even one. Oops. Let's make an even one millimeter. Quick check. And because remember we extruded this area, so we've got we've got a piece here that goes underneath the other piece. There are two pieces, two polygons that are side by side that are touching each other. We can't have that. So get rid of the bottom, the bigger piece, the one that actually fits all the way underneath that. And then go in with your vertices and 
you're selecting the corners of these two pieces because they haven't been welded yet and it still doesn't weld because there's nothing there's nothing for this this piece here to weld to this piece because there's no line here um, so uh, the easiest way is probably just to cut as much I didn't want to do this but we'll just do it Let's try it again because it's not being very cooperative. Come on now. Had a long day. We don't need to be fussy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, taper. Did it just cut more? Okay, good. I want to taper or taper. Target weld. It's not let me select here. Is that because we have two segments? No. We have two segments there. It's not letting me weld. It's probably because there's probably multiple edges here. Let's go find them. Yeah, there's two edge. There's two segments right there. One segment right there. Ah, the reason is that that won't ver uh, weld is because if we go inside the box you'll see right there there's this piece right there see how you can't see it from in from outside but it's there you can't you can't weld three different polygons in three different directions that way so if you delete that bottom piece you're not going to see it anyway and then select then you can vertically you can weld that bad boy together and it's it's one piece now you want to check your other welds just to make sure that everything's coated. And then now you can click this border, and then you see it's a nice clean seal right there because it's sealed off. And you can cap that thing, and it's clean now. Just like that. We need to do that, unfortunately, with this other one too. Just make sure you select, go in here and select that bottom piece. Delete it. And, yeah, you're going to have to cut these two. You can always try to segment. You can always try to connect them. Let me see if it works. Let's see. That one and that one. And I just want one. And I want to go to there. I want to go to vertice. And I want to weld my vertices together. It did not let me do that. Are they too far apart? What's the deal here? There's two vertices. Will not let me put them together. One let me do it, the other one did not. And it's probably because of this piece here. So let's see if we can't delete that for a second and weld this piece. Because we really need these two vertices right here welded. And that did it. Okay, now let's see if we can cap this. Okay, that's what it was. You just had to delete it for a second, and then you could put it back on. Uh, man, do we really want to cut this? I guess we can slice and dice. We'll just connect them like that. Copy over there, or... Uh, snap to it right there and then grab a hold of your vertices there's two of them and weld them and then you can take your border cap it and you fix that little area and it's a lot cleaner now I want to then add segment right here because I want it to be a little chunky going up uh, about right there, not that far, there, and then that allows me to bring these bad boys, which, if it goes to the side view, these, to, I, don't know, I want both of them, I want these and these to come out like that, 
like that. Nice. So that'll be like the supports to the roof and the overhang. And that's good. Uh, we're going to show just part of the roof and then that's it because a lot of it's going to be uh, on the next, or it's going to be uh, completely covered by the um, the tree. So we don't need any of this because it's going to be covered by the tree. So delete all that. And really we can delete the backside too because it's not going to be uh, we don't want the backside because it's going to be inside the building anyway. Okay. Welcome everybody, those new people that have joined in the last, I don't know, 15 minutes. Nice little surge came in. You guys always come in as a cluster, like 15 of you at a time. So you guys must be at like some ra ra raging party and decide, hey, this party sucks. That's how we're going to boost this thing up again. Well, we're going to go check out Simple Poly Tricks' uh, Twitch because that's that's where it's at. All right. So now I want this top part here. Not all that, just the top, top, top. And I don't want the sides and I want to extrude upward or do I want the sides maybe for just for this one extrusion and then we let go of the past yeah I think I don't think we actually need the sides I want to go to the front um, and then slightly upward because you've got to have some kind of a, a gap right there. That's going to suck for supports, but that's just how it's going to be. Now you're going to have supports that are a mile long for that, having that kind of overhang. Um, but that's just how it goes. Um, the reason being is I want it to be an over. I want to be more in that than an overhang. I don't want it just to be the shape. Let me back up a little bit. Let me back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up. I want actually not to have it like that. Um, make a separate piece. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. I want a separate piece like this. Make it go up. I can bring it back down a little bit because I don't want it that high. It's going to be the second roof, or it's, or it's the second roof. It's going to be the uh, second floor. We're only going to go up about that high, and then it's going to taper off with the tree. But I want to be able to bridge the, the thing together. So I need it to be, like for, him, for instance, for this one, I want it to be not that way. I want it to be that way so that it kind of overhangs like that. Like that. And then it does have a little bit of height to it. We'll cut that out as we can. Maybe we can actually bring it up even more and then just cut more of it. Uh, something like that. But I want it to... I want it to bridge these holes here. So I need... One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I need ten segments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think that's right. And then I want them I want them to stick right on. Let's see here. I'll move this temporarily to the front. Yeah. And then move these as we go like that. Like that. See what I'm doing? 
And then that way we can get them to to fit better. Because, I mean, the two pieces, we can either get them to print together or we can have them print as separate. It's, I'm not sure yet. We will get to that much, much down the road. Right now we're just kind of getting the whole gist of the idea of, of this house. And making it so that it looks... And it's going to take a lot of hours. Bear with us. All right. So now that we've got it there, um, we can re remove the supports. I want to move that back side. And then... Uh, then I've got to get in here on the side. I got to make it and cut here, just one, and then make it so that it snaps to this as well. So now it's an easy matter of going in, selecting just that base part, not all, not the whole thing. Just the pieces that are on top of the supports. Like that. Delete them. And the reason is now we can actually uh, put this all together and it would fit. It would actually be one piece. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I can attach this. Uh, I want the other way around. I want this to attach to that. And because of the sec, because of our vertices and the way we've measured everything out, uh, we can go into here, and we can hit weld. And it's 46 right now. It should be 23, 24. Okay, well, whatever. It can't be perfect. Close enough. So it's got 24 uh, vertices, and now it's all even, and it's all one piece. And we can actually work with this a little bit more. And make it even more dynamic. All right, let's go back down to the main body. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do was get the supports that I forgot to earlier, um, and I might have screwed myself up again on this, but it's all about getting things done. Uh, I want this to come across. And I don't want it to be, I guess, the same height as the window. Okay, I should make this out longer if we want to. Yeah, I want that to go out farther. Not all the way, but close. Just for cleanliness. Kind of level that out. Level that out. You're just eyeballing now. Just eyeballing out. Something like that. All right. So now, man, I wish the colors were so much better here. Let's try something else. We got like a dark. That's not very good at all. Usually the dark blues tend to, eh, it kind of shows, but not really. And it's kind of hard to tell like what anything is. It's one of the problems with this uh, system. It's better to put like some kind of a texture to it, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Um, turn on that so we can actually see what, a little bit. Man, that is really, really bad. I hate using lighter colors, but uh, whatever. All right, so it has some wood beams that stick out now. So that gives it a little bit more of a cottage feel to it. This piece up here needs to have the same thing. We 
extrude. Uh, I do want these pieces extruded. I did not do that like I should have. Nope, I wanted extrude. And unfortunately, because of my poor decision, it did the exact same thing earlier. So I'll clean that up later. We don't need to waste our time going through all those. But yeah, it's all about preparation, folks. And you got to go in there and, and know what you're doing going in. It, it helps that you prepare and plan. Um, and sometimes, like I said, before you, sometimes you have to redo it from scratch. Because it just got so foobarred that you can't do it anymore. Can't work on it anymore. Um, I'm going to try to cheat here. Let's see if I can get away with it. I'm going to connect all of these pieces. Now, I've got just the top parts, the under pieces of these overhangs. And I'm going to connect them. So there's a line through them. And then I'm going to snap to that. And then I'm going to go in from my side, making sure I have just the selection tool on. I'm going to select these, this area here, but all I want is that piece that's hidden. You see how that is? If you go on this side, you can see it's that piece that no one's going to see. And it's really kind of annoying. Now it's kind of empty, emptied out. And we might be able to uh, weld these vertices. And we welded some of them. So that may have actually worked better and easier than I thought. Yeah, that's all. That's all one piece. Yeah, nicely done, John. All right, well done. All right, so we got these pieces together. I kind of like to bring these things out a little bit more so that it's more at an angle. Yeah, so we need to take the top part so it's nice and flat up there. Yeah, get more dynamic of a overhang there. It feels like it's stronger, more supportive. can actually go in here and uh, in here and here bring it down a notch that way it's sticking out but it's not quite as bad as it was so it's not as sharp yeah that's looking better little by little folks little by little bit by bit we get what we want to. All right. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu, what's next? Let's do the door. Let's do the door. We already did the door. Let's not do the door. I just couldn't tell because it was green. All right. We already did that, so we don't need to worry about the door. That's good enough. Window. There we go. We'll do the window. Uh, let's make it look like it is got a substantial... Uh, piece to it. Not that big. But that big. And then we're going to make the vertical. Because we control it. Something that big. Deselect the glass. That will be where the glass is. And extrude the framework. Not quite as far as the actual frame itself but get it close and now we've got that taken care of that was easy no big whoop hey no big whoop um let's do some stone work just the stones just the stones the stones uh, extrude. 
just a bit and I want these to go back in here so that it looks like it actually is part of its stonework and then what we can do is take these three pieces here and move them outward same thing for this move it out move it in maybe down a little bit so it's not quite so sharp move this piece out and down so now you've got a little bit of a segment there that looks and feels kind of stony you can even do the bottom piece too so that uh, when it comes out it feels like it's naturally done and not a part of the of no, a natural part of the house but it actually feels like it was uh, part of the ground part of the earth but the top piece will leave nice and chiseled so that it'll look and feel like it's you know man-made in that area so let me sit there and fiddle dd all we want but there we go there's a there's a stone that kind of turn off all this stuff and it's rough because it comes down to the bottom there and it starts to get chiseled out there so it's just an option you don't have to do that okay you don't have to do that but i did because i wanted to all right, let's do something over here so that it actually feels like something. I want local, and eh, we'll keep it that distance. But we're going to, once again, move. Yeah, that's good where it's at. And taper that in. Taper these down. Taper it out so we can taper these out. Something like that. Probably even more than that. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. But that's it. It's a matter of going in and and just tweaking a little bit at a time so that it gives you that sensation that it looks like stonework is at the bottom and you just basically chiseled the foundation out of the rock. And it, it looks rough here, but that's the printer takes care of a lot of that. And uh, you basically can go in there and, and finish it up so that those stonework comes off the ground and finishes to where it looks like it's actually man-made. Pretty simple. All right, now, and we'll worry about this piece after we get done with that one, because we can pretty much mirror it, paste it, and then change the little things when we be done. Let's uh, let's get the uh, tree concept down so that we can figure out what we're going to do here, because that's going to be probably the most complicated piece here, because there's going to be a lot of pro booling. I can already tell, uh, which is the operation to fuse pieces together and it's kind of complicated to to get that to work uh, before we do that let's save it as and then we'll save it again as a new file and we are going to make a cone to start off with this and the tree that's going to grow around this thing is going to be behind little gable tower somewhere around here and it's going to be the dominating piece but I want it inside the printing area just make a little cone for now because that's going to be a lot different once we get the root system in there okay and then 
we're going to have that come up and over and come up and over. There may be another tree right here in between here, a separate one that looks like that may be another idea. Let's put that down there. And it's going to be bigger than the actual section there. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And that way we can extend this little piece here just in case. Uh, go to top view and grab all these vertices here. Move them back a little bit. That way there's back until somewhere there. Then you can go in and make a little, I don't know, a little lip here. And just select that, hold down shift, and you go outward laterally. Go right into the tree because, like I said, this is going to be, it really needs to look like the tree and the house are growing in as one. So don't be afraid to go into it a little bit because, like I said, we're going to have to boolean uh, these pieces together to make them look like they're actually all grown into one. Okay. All right. Now let's go. Well, we can start with this one because it's a simpler one. That back one's going to be complicated. We may wait until next next week to actually do that. I may work on that this weekend. All right. Um, so let's get the basic uh, shape of the cone in, of the tree, rather. Um, so I've got it set at 60 sides, which is pretty good. That's a lot. And then uh, it's got a lot of segments right there on the sides. Uh, but that's fine because eh, we'll put the turbo smooth on when we put the bark on. So let's, let's keep it low for now. Let's keep it a nice low poly. And then we'll add the, the faces later. Because like I said, this is going to be kind of complicated. Let's um, go to Edit Poly. And we'll start with this one. And grab a good number of those. Because it's going to be the root system. I'm going to have this just wrap around the front here. Um, something like that. And I want to have plenty of segments. I want it to go into the into the building all the way. I want it to go down to the ground. And there's going to be rocks along the big part of it, so maybe this is going to go over it. So let's see. Oop, did not want to do that. Let's, uh, well, that was really good. Let's back it up a little bit do that again. All right. There's that. Bring that around a little bit more. Again, keep an eye on where we're going with this and shrink it down just a tad bit not much maybe bring it back a little bit so that it has a little bit of a, a drop down to it do the same thing and just keep doing that uh, again we'll clean this up later but for right now we're just worrying about getting it so that it does its overlap and comes down smaller and smaller. Continue to wrap around that tree. I'm going to go at this point to go up and over because it's going to go over a big rock. So we'll start there and keep going. We can actually start rotating a little bit because this is really starting to go the wrong direction. Shrink that down. We're making a root, so don't act like it has to be perfect. In fact, if you make it perfect, you're going to screw it up. It's going to look like crap because it's going to look man-made. But envision that there's going to be a rock right here, and just don't worry about the size of the rock for now. Just worry about laying out your root where you want it to, to go. Follow the path line that you want it to go. And then make the rock based upon the root. In nature, of course, it'd be the other way around. Um, but who cares? I and mean, this is, like I said, it's fairy tales. So 
At this point, I'm going to extrude it in a different way. I'm going to go to poly, and I'm going to deselect everything on the side here. If I can get it to do that. There we go. That's good. And then, not poly, I want it to do that way because I'm going to split this thing. And I want it to come down uh, and come inward a little bit. And rotate that so that it's there. Rotate it in so it's not quite so tapered out. Not quite so tall. There. And then the other one that we have here, it's going to go the different direction. It's going to curl up and wrap around this top piece here. So we're going to actually uh, see if we can't rotate this bad boy. Let's see if we can get this thing to work. Extrude. And bring it around and like that bring it back it really wants to go up there real bad it's like man there's probably some princess up there in that tower and I really would like to get up in there so I'm gonna go take a pixie because no one's going to suspect a root. I'm just a root. But I've got a devious mind. But no one's going to report me. Because what are they going to do? Like, I guess they'll chop me down. But they wouldn't even know that. Because then you got environmentalists that would come in there and stop me. Uh, for being chopped up to bits. So I'm just a root. I can do whatever I want. Look at that. It's coming along. Looks like a root. Looks like a weird, freaky root. I hope everybody's having a delightful time today. Because if they don't, it sucks. Because I am on here purely for your entertainment. Nothing more. Go in here, keep that hugged in there, because it's going to be like a, a vine. Woo! Super happy. We don't want it that happy, so let's get it, let's tone it back down a notch, too. I want it to be a lot narrower. And... Change that to local. I'm changing the uh, orientations of these things. That's too steep. That doesn't look good. That looks a little bit better. Okay. And now we do a little bit of a dance over the top. Way too wide. Starting to look ugly, guys. Starting to look ugly. Let me have to do some changing here real quick. Because it's looking awful. Move some of these vertices around. So that they actually are lined up better. Uh, man, yeah, that's... isolate it so I can actually see inside this thing there it is that's where the, my big problem is all this all this got crinkly crinkly dude I don't want any of these pieces inside 
when I'm outside. Outside, outside. Oh! Ran off there. Here we go. It's getting there. There's still some pieces. That's a problem. Another one right out. It's way in there that needs to come out. Like that. It looks like a snail. <laughs> but with one antenna. The other one got savagely cut off by wolves. Like how that piece is. Uh, There's one little piece of giving me fits here. There we go. That's good enough. I bring this little guy back to the group. On isolation. And then come around and see what we did. Like that. Man, runs off too much. Work it. Work it. All right. I think we finally got it back to not being just quite so crazy. I'm going to see if I can align this thing a little bit better. Uh, not that way. How about that way? Definitely not that way. Yeah, that's perfect. No. That didn't look good, good at all. I guess the X was the best one. Kind of looks like we started to begin with, you know? It really does. Because it probably is. Man, I tell you what, it is really sensitive, me moving the camera around. All right, now let's extrude this thing, get this stupid thing over with. Oh man, that is awful. Oops, did not mean to do that. Let's do it when it's clean, and then we'll just move it as is right there. And sometimes you got to do it physically, like you just don't want to let it extrude on its own. Let's keep this thing. Yeah. down onto this thing so now it's like reaching up there and going hello and we'll just let this thing terminate then right there there we go Oh, that was a long time just to do that. I almost ran out of time, too. It's a bummer. Uh, let's see if we can't get this thing up a little higher. And we're going to extrude the rest of the way down on this one. And rotate. Rotate. 
bring it all in. Okay, and extrude it again. We may just pull this all the way down so that we have this even steeper. Yeah, it's, that'll be fine. I'm going to put the rock underneath there. Himself, yes. Put Dwayne down there. Just right underneath that root. Get it closer to... The building. There's a little piece here. These two pieces are overlapping the upper root. So can't let that happen. I'm going to try to get it so it's not... Yeah. Nope. Nope. Can't bring it over. <laughs> Got to bring them out so that it's away from that. Something like that. Yep, like that. <laughs> and then it, it's a matter, like a lot of this stuff, that I'm not going to show um, because it's also time to leave. Um, it's just a matter of going in here and just, just breaking up the ridge line, the edges of this. It'll be just, you know, a lot smoother. Um, and get the rest of it in there. We'll put a little rock in here. We'll finish this off. This this whole section will be one big rock that the part just kind of folds into. We'll do the same thing over here. We'll bring the tree up, and this one will have a branch, a big branch that goes right down across there. And then we will actually continue. The peak of the roof will be on up here uh, just, just enough that we can get the roof up here. But the big part of the tree will be right here, taking up a lot of space. Uh, and then it goes up here and maybe wraps around the branch. Uh, the branches wrap around the top of this tower. And that way it's all one piece. Who knows? Um, and then we'll worry about this big boy. It's going to take up most of the back part of the, the building anyway. So, All right. Let me save this as a secondary file. Switch 3. That'll do it uh, for the evening. Um, we did quite quite a bit. We got a little farther than I thought we would. Uh, but you can see some of these models will take quite a bit longer uh, than others. Um, I will probably have most of this done over the weekend. I won't have all of it, but I'll leave some of it probably for Monday. If not, I'll have a final image, and then uh, we'll go over the areas that I worked on and what I did. Uh, on Monday to kind of get an idea of how we went about making this. Uh, but this is definitely going to be a huge centerpiece. This will be a, a, a focal point where you slap this down on the battle map and uh, it takes up, you know, a good eight inches uh, on either side um, with some verticality. But this whole thing, I'm planning on literally having it up this high. So rock, I want rocks to be up here underneath this whole thing and this thing to be sitting like that high off your table you know four or five four inches off the table and then have like a walkway that goes up it you know get some actual height and verticality to it um because i don't think we really utilize that near enough uh in gaming and whatnot so 
For now, we'll play it on the ground. We'll do the rocks later. So, this concludes yet another amazing adventure. You have successfully wasted another two hours of your life. Uh, I appreciate, as always, uh, sticking around and watching this. Uh, we're actually going to have a little bit of a secret encore uh, for those who are interested in sticking around. Um, we're ending this for the night, and we're going to switch gears in a couple of minutes after I get some food in me, and we're going to stream uh, Battletech, the new game that came out uh, yesterday. It, yesterday. Uh, I've just got it. Downloaded it, haven't touched it. We're going to give it a shot and see how poorly I can stumble my way through it. So for those who are interested, stick around. Uh, stay on here. I'll be back online here in about, no, oh, let's uh, let's say about 20 minutes because I need to go get dinner. Um, and I'll be back about 20 minutes or so from now, 20, 25 minutes. Until then, guys, have a great weekend. Enjoy it. Get out. Enjoy the uh, weather. Hopefully it's good over there. And we'll see you on Monday, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time as usual. Until then, folks, have a good night. Peace.